Hey all and welcome to another awesome tutorial. My name is Luke and in this video I'll show you how to recreate an amazing scene like this complete with a bear hunting for salmon swimming under the water. You'll be surprised how simple and effective it actually is. So let's not waste any more time and get started building. All good models start with a plan. And the plan for this model is to occupy the shelf behind my workbench. So with a couple of quick measurements, I'm ready to cut the baseboard. I'm using some leftover particle board I had lying around for the base, but any rigid wood or foam base would work. However, just be aware that the resin that is used for the water will heat up as it cures, so a wooden base is probably a safer option. Once the base has been cut, and after I give it a test fit on the shelf just to make sure it fits, I start by mapping out the topography onto the base. It's just a rough sketch to get a feel for the design. The characters I'm using for the diorama are this HO scale bear and photographer, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but all my landscaping decisions are focused around where these two details will be placed. The landform is first built up using expanded polystyrene. This stuff is great because it's cheap and easy to cut, although it can get messy when trying to cut out odd shapes. Using a tool like a hot wire foam cutting knife makes much less mess in these scenarios, however a good sharp blade is perfect for fast simple cuts like this as well. Styro Goo is perfect for fixing the foam onto the diorama base. It is tacky straight away and doesn't take long to dry, so I can continue building without much delay. And Styragoo is ideal gluing one piece of foam to another. A big part of this model will be the rock features along the riverbank and on the riverbed. I ended up making a whole bunch of rocks from Woodland Scenics and Knock using plaster of Paris mixed to a thin soupy mixture. Before pouring the plaster, I make sure to pre-wet the moulds. This helps the plaster get into all the tiny gaps and prevents bubbles. I'm not exactly sure which rock castings I'll use, so I just make a large batch of various rocks that I can test on the diorama later. Tapping the moulds on the bench will help dislodge any bubbles from the face of the mould and again help the plaster get into all the small gaps. Also, if you're using the knock rock moulds, make sure to keep the packaging as it doubles as a mould support, ensuring the rock mould sits flat as the plaster cures. After about 4 hours or so, the rocks are removed from the moulds and can be tested in place on the diorama. It's just a bit of a guessing game at this stage, trying out different combinations and positions until you find something you're happy with. Once you find something that looks good, I remove the rocks and place them off to the side in a way that will be easy for me to put them back in the same position later. Sculpted Modeling Mix is used to cover the surface of the diorama and build up the terrain. It's a fibrous plaster mix that is perfect for filling and building up the ground level. I use quite a lot of this stuff when building dioramas, which is why I generally buy it in bulk. It gets mixed with water until it's a thick paste. Try to avoid adding too much water because we want the plaster to be able to hold its shape. Now we just slap it on the diorama and start spreading it around with your hands creating subtle undulations and hills across the model. I continue spreading it out and smoothing it with my fingers until I get a look that I'm happy with. Next I add the rocks by first giving the rocks a good soaking with water. This ensures they stick properly to the plaster we just put down. The rocks get pushed down into the plaster and blended in. More plaster mix is added as necessary and I continue to smoothen the plaster with my fingers as it begins to set. It's not entirely necessary that it's perfectly smooth as it will eventually be covered with dirt and grass texturing but I like to get it reasonably smooth just in case I want to add a dirt path or road because in that scenario you'll need a nice smooth surface. Any plaster that got on the rock detail can be washed off with a stiff brush and some water. 
you want to make sure you do this before the plaster completely hardens. Now for the riverbed detail, I use a variety of textures. Some woodland scenics fine talus, some coarse dirt and some sand is used for the riverbed. To glue this down I use Mod Podge Matte and isopropyl alcohol. The surface is painted with the glue straight from the bottle. This will help the dirt texture stick to the sloping banks of the river. Next some Woodland Scenics Fine Talus is applied over the riverbed and around the rocks. This layer is followed up with the coarse dirt texture that was dug up from the backyard. It has some larger rocks and pebbles mixed in with it. Now the sand is used to blend everything together, filling all the gaps between the previous textures. This layer helps tie everything together, making it look like the rocks are embedded into the ground. This process is continued right along the riverbed, using the same steps until everything is covered. You can see that there are even some tiny little twigs mixed in with the dirt, which just adds another layer of detail. Any excess texturing is brushed away from the unwanted areas, and this is followed up with a misting of isopropyl alcohol, and then a good amount of Mod Podge diluted with water. The scenic glue mixture is mixed one part Mod Podge mat with three parts water and a few drops of dish soap. It's applied quite heavily to ensure it soaks right through all the texturing we applied. Once the glue has had time to dry, I tidy up the edges of the model, removing any excess plaster and dirt texturing that stuck to the outer edges of the diorama. Colouring the surface is a multi-step process involving a variety of colours. A raw sienna wash is used to paint the bank of the river and the surface of the ground above the river. This will all be covered later with more dirt texturing, however it is applied to hide any white plaster that may show through later. Next a couple of different browns and a black wash is mixed up to colour the riverbed. The raw sienna is added to the bank of the river and around some of the rocks that will protrude above the water. While the wash is still wet, the brown wash is applied heavily across the entire surface of the river. I used two types of brown for a bit of colour variation. Now the black is lightly applied to simulate the deeper areas of the riverbed. Because the washes are wet, they will blend together as they start to dry, giving a nice transition between the colours. Now for the rock work. Vallejo Neutral Grey is used as the base coat for the rocks. It's liberally applied to the plaster rocks and is also dry brushed across the surface of the riverbed as well, highlighting all the rocks that make up the surface of the riverbed. Next, a much darker grey wash is applied over the entire surface, which will sit in all the tiny cracks and crevices of the rockwork, bringing out all that intricate detail. To highlight the edges of the rockwork, some Vallejo cold white is dry brushed over the surface. This helps bring out the sharp edges and lines of the rocks, adding another level of detail. The final step is to reapply some of the brown and black washes to the riverbed, adding colour and depth back into the scene that was lost in the previous step when painting the rocks. I make sure that it's a very thin wash so that it doesn't cover up the rocks we just painted and it's only applied around the larger riverbed rock work and along the bank of the river. Now for the rest of the dirt texturing. This is basically some dirt collected from the backyard. It's then sifted down to a very fine grade and some beige coloured grout is added to help lighten the colour. The way it's applied is by filling an old spray can lid and tightly holding some old stocking across the lid. Some mob podge is applied over the surface anywhere the dirt will be applied, avoiding the rock work. The glue helps the dirt stick onto the sloping terrain. The glue tends to dry pretty fast so I only work in small sections at a time. Next dirt is evenly sprinkled across the surface. I also make sure to allow some of the dirt texturing to extend over the riverbank towards the middle of the river as it gradually fades into the rocky surface of the riverbed. 
This will help create a nice transition of dirt from the bank of the river down to the bottom of the riverbed. Excess dirt is dusted away from the top of the rocks and gently teased to help the dirt blend between the rocks down the bank of the river. If necessary, extra dirt can be added to the bank as desired until we get a nice natural transition. And just like we did with the riverbed, all of that gets sealed by first applying isopropyl alcohol and then some of the scenic glue mixture. The trees I'll be using for this diorama are some homemade pine trees. There's a separate video with a step-by-step -step guide so you too can create these amazing trees. The link for the video can be found in the description or just check out the trees playlist on my YouTube channel page. One by one, each tree is tested in place on the diorama and once I'm happy with the position, I use a drill that is about the same size as the trunk and drill a hole for the tree. The mounting pin is removed from the base of the tree and the trunk is pushed into the hole. This process is repeated until the diorama is filled with trees. Next, some small pegs with numbers are made and used to replace each tree with the corresponding number on the foam board. That way, each tree's location is numbered and when it's time to glue the trees in permanently, they will be put back in the correct locations. The first layer of greenery is the static grass. On this model I used a mixture of Woodland Scenics medium and light green along with some Mini Nature Early Autumn 6 and 7mm grass fibres. The static grass applicator hopper is filled so it's ready to go. Woodland Scenics static tack glue gets applied in all the areas where you want the grass to be applied. A small brush will help spread the glue out and give it a non-uniform edge between the areas where the static grass will be applied. Doing your best to avoid getting glue over the rocks. Now all we need to do is turn on the static grass applicator and shake it over the areas of glue. The grass on the sloping bank may need to be teased vertical with a comb as it tends to stick out at a 90 degree angle from the surface. A vacuum cleaner with a stocking over the end is used to collect all the loose grass fibres so they can be used again later on another model. While the glue was still tacky, a second layer of the mini nature grass was applied over the top of the first layer of grass we just applied for a bit of added colour variation. And then the same process of teasing the grass fibres and vacuuming away the excess is used. Additional colour and texture is added with various Woodland Scenics and Hornby coarse and fine turf, along with some dried leaves that have been put in a blender and blended until I get various textures to simulate dead leaves and bark on the ground. The various colours are sprinkled across the surface of the model. On the steeper slopes you may need a small drop of glue to help get the textures to stick. There's no right or wrong way to do this, just take into account the locations of the trunks of the trees and gradually build up the different colours and textures of the greenery. Once you've got it all in place, it gets permanently fixed by applying the alcohol and scenic glue mixture. Now we can put the trees back in their allocated spots. To glue them, I used a drop of the Woodland Scenics Static Tack and to help blend them into the surrounding terrain, some of the blended leaf texture is used around the base of each tree. Some of the Woodland Scenics fine leaf foliage and briar patch is used to add some more trees and a bit more density to the rear edge of the diorama. It's really simple stuff to use. It can be pulled apart and used to make quick and easy trees and the leftover bits can also be used for small shrubs as well. A small hole may or may not be needed, but for the larger ones you'll probably need a hole to stick the twig into with a drop of glue.
The photographer, bear and the salmon that are swimming upstream were all downloaded and 3D printed. The photographer was purchased online from cgtrader.com and the grizzly and various fish models were downloaded for free from thingiverse.com. The 3D printer I used to print these models was the new Elfin 3D printer from Nova 3D. It's perfect for printing intricate models like this and does equally good with the larger prints as well. It's a breeze to use and comes pre-leveled from the factory, making setup much faster. Once the models have been printed, washed and cured, they are painted just like you would paint any other plastic or metal model and then they are ready to use. There are some great videos here on YouTube all about printing with resin 3D printers, so if you're thinking about getting started, they are well worth watching. The salmon will need to be at various depths throughout the river, so the best way to achieve this I've found is to create small stems made with clear epoxy and have a salmon stuck to the end of each stem. Once the epoxy is cured, it's removed from the baking paper. The length of the stem is trimmed to the desired length and the fish is glued onto the riverbed with a drop of super glue. Just like the fish, the bear is glued onto the rock with a drop of super glue as well. The photographer is fixed with some Micromark detail tack, so I can move him around if I desire later. Before pouring the resin, I roughly paint the edge of the diorama with black paint. It doesn't need to be perfect, and only the edge just below the riverbed needs to be painted. To create the river dam, I'm using some PVC foam board that still has the protective plastic cover on it. Although you can basically use anything, as long as it's flat, and it has a layer of clear packing tape between it and the resin. The smoother the surface, the better. Each wall section is attached to the diorama using a bead of wood glue that covers the entire perimeter of the river. Just make sure it's a continuous bead of glue with no gaps in between. The wall sections are pressed tight up against the diorama on all three sides. In addition to the wood glue, some hot glue is also used along the edge to ensure that no resin spills out onto the table. Once all the edges are sealed, and after the wood glue has had a couple of hours to dry, we can start getting ready to pour the resin. For this model, I'm using deep cast clear epoxy from AA Composites in Australia. It's the same type of resin used for making wooden river tables. It's perfect for deep pours and has a low curing temperature, which is perfect, especially for building models like this. The resin gets mixed to a ratio of two to one by volume. Calculating exactly how much resin you'll need can be a challenge, especially when the surface is undulating with protruding rock features. However, if you do find you don't have enough resin, it's pretty easy to mix up a second pour quickly and add that on top before it starts to cure, because this resin has a two hour working time. To colour the resin I'm using a mix of blue and burnt umber. These pigments are specifically created for dyeing epoxy resin and a little goes a very long way, so just make sure to add colour in small amounts. If you want to add more colour you can, however if you add too much colour you'll need to start again. I mix the colour into each cup of the part A resin and then mix those two parts together. It leaves me with a murky brown colour with a bluish tint. Once mixed, I pour it into a larger mixing container and leave it for a while to allow the bubbles to pop. Now I'm ready to start mixing. I add part B and very gently start stirring. This resin has a very long working time, so I make sure to stir it nice and slowly, doing my best to avoid introducing unwanted bubbles. All up, I spend about 10 minutes slowly stirring until it was completely mixed together. Now for the fun part, pouring the resin. This is the part where I really hope the dam is properly sealed. The last thing I want is to see resin slowly leaking out from underneath the diorama. It 
It's inevitable that there will be some bubbles, but these are easily removed by using a soldering torch to pop them. Just make sure you don't accidentally set your trees on fire. If needed, you can push the resin around to ensure it fills all the small gaps between the rocks along the embankment with a small stick. Now that it's poured and there are definitely no leaks, I cover the model and leave it for about 24 hours as the resin cures. You can already see it starting to transform. Each piece of PVC foam board can now be removed. And it's now that I can really start to envision the final look of the diorama. Here you can see the foam board had a slightly textured surface. To fix this I'll need to sand it back just a little by starting with 400 grit sandpaper and gradually working up to a 1200 grit sandpaper. You'll know it's ready when you can see reflections in the resin. You'll also want to remove the lip along the edge of the resin as well. The resin isn't fully cured yet so it should be quite easy to use a sharp knife to remove the raised edge. According to the instructions on this resin, it takes about 24 hours for the initial cure and then up to 10 days to reach full cure. To bring back that flawless shine along the edge of the river, I mixed up a small amount of Envirotex light. This is what I typically used for pouring rivers, however on a deep river pour like this, it would have cured much too hot and likely caused cracking to occur. The epoxy is brushed over the edge of the river until there is a thin even coat across the entire edge. You'll want a cup of isopropyl alcohol to wash the brush and clean off the resin. And just like we did with the main river, any bubbles are removed with a soldering torch. Now you can see how nice the edge looks. If you've seen any of my previous river tutorials, you'll know that I love using Mod Podge gloss and my airbrush to create the ripples. A thin layer of Mod Podge is applied in sections along the surface of the river, and then the airbrush is used to create the tiny ripples. I work in small sections at a time as the glue dries quite quickly, and slowly move along the surface of the river until it's completely covered. It's left to dry completely before moving on to the next step. White water is added with some Woodland Scenics water ripples and soft flake snow. The ripples product is a thick clear paste that will dry completely clear and the snowflakes add colour and volume. The two are mixed together creating a white paste. The white paste is applied anywhere you would expect white water, so I apply it around the rocks and have it trailing away as it gradually fades. Using a stick and a brush seemed to do a good job of teasing out the paste in a random fashion. I also put some extra white water around the feet of the bear as well. To further blend the white water in with the rest of the river, I added a second layer of Mod Podge gloss over the surface to create more ripples going right over all the areas of white water as well. And the last little detail was adding some white gloss paint very sparingly around the larger areas of white water to create a bit of a feathered look between the clear water and the rough water. And lastly I added a border using an old sheet of translucent 1mm plastic. Tracing the contours of the riverbed onto the plastic sheet. After cutting out the sheet and giving it a test fit, I painted it black and glued it to the sides of the model. And that completes this awesome diorama that will have a new home behind my workbench. It was so much fun to build and it's a real eye catcher. Especially being able to see a glimpse of the underwater scene with the salmon swimming upstream. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you're looking for another awesome video, try this one. It's another one of my favorites. Cheers, and thanks for watching.